Let's get ready to rumble everyone because today we're doing a battle of the book boxes. Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. I have kind of a fun little video for you today in that I'm going to be doing a comparison between Book of the Month, which is obviously a very well-known and very popular bookish subscription service, and Aardvark Book Club, which is definitely well lesser known and one that I never hear talk about. In fact, I didn't even know Aardvark Book Club existed until January of this year, and I was told that the services they offer are very comparable to those of Book of the Month, and so finally somebody is out there giving direct competition to Book of the Month, and that definitely intrigued me. And so I wanted to go ahead and compare the two. So what I want to kind of do is go over the services of each of the book boxes, talk about their pros and cons, and then in the end kind of determine why one might be better than the other, or maybe they're not better than the other. Maybe they're both equally comparable. That's what we are here to find out. Now, I do want to say that I have been a Book of the Month subscriber for almost five years. It will be five years in June. And so I am very, very familiar with Book of the Month and their services, what they offer, how they operate, and things of that nature. So I'm going to be able to speak much more intelligently about Book of the Month than I am going to do about Aardvark Book Club. I did do as much research as I possibly could before starting this video and like I said I have received my first book so I definitely now have some experience with Aardvark but I will be able to know more about Book of the Month than Aardvark and hopefully that will change as I continue to subscribe to them if I continue to do so. So without further ado let's go ahead and start the battle. We're going to go ahead and start with Book of the Month because that is the one that I'm sure that you are all familiar with. Book of the Month is basically everywhere and any bookish influencer who has a decent amount of following is probably sponsored by them. I am definitely not sponsored by them, but like I said, I have been personally subscribed to them for almost five years at this point. However, on the off chance that you are not familiar with Book of the Month, Book of the Month is a very, very popular monthly bookish subscription service, and every month on the first, they release five to seven titles that they have curated and selected based on what they believe their subscribers are going to want. So every single month on the first, you are able to go in and select one of those books as your Book of the Month. You will also have an opportunity to put two add-on books into your box every single month. And these add-ons can be chosen from those five to seven curated picks, or if they are still in stock, Book of the Month does keep on hand selections from past boxes. And typically every single month, they will add books to their stock that have never been offered in a box before. So basically every month, you will have the opportunity to add three books to your box and have it shipped. Now, here are some important things to know. You cannot just place an order with add-ons. In order for your box to ship, you have to have at least one of those curated titles in your box. So for example, when February comes around, and they release the titles, I have to select at least one of those titles and put it in my box. And then I can get add-ons from past selections or the books that were specifically added to their website to be add-ons. But that box will not ship unless there is a monthly selection in it. At the time that your box ships, you are going to be paying for those add-ons only because your book of the month that you selected is actually covered by the monthly renewal fee. So as of right now, I pay $17.11 each month for the renewal fee. So that is a fee that I get charged every single month to be able to choose my one monthly curated selection. And I also pay $10.99 plus tax for each add-on. So when that monthly box ships, if I have one book of the month and two add-ons in there, I am only paying for those two add-ons because I've already paid for that book of the month with the monthly renewal fee, which for me renews at the end of every single month. So in total, every single month, I pay about $40.87 for the monthly renewal fee and the two add-ons for three brand new release adult size hardcovers. I do not know if this price is the same for absolutely everybody. And I do not know if this price is the same for new subscribers. So I don't know if you go on now and subscribe to Book of the Month if you are going to be charged these same rates. This is just my personal experience and what I am charged monthly for these books. Book of the Month does have a skip option. So if on the first you go and you look at their five to seven selections that they have and none of them are appealing to you, you do have the option to skip that month. And what happens when you skip that month is that you retain the credit that you got from that renewal fee and it rolls over into the next month. So you are actually not going to be charged another renewal fee until that credit is used. However, I will say that if you do not formally go in and skip a box, meaning if you don't go onto book of the month and say skip this month's box, if you just don't add anything to your box and don't have anything shipped, they don't consider that a formal skip. And so you will be charged your renewal fee that month. And you'll just continue to accumulate credits unless you formally skip the boxes. So again, at the beginning of the month, if you go on and you don't see a book that you want and you just don't add anything to your box, they don't consider that a formal skip. You literally have to select the button that says skip this month's box for them to consider it a skip. I learned that the hard way actually. So I just wanted to put it on your radar, but it 
is very nice that they do have the skip option so that you are not obligated to continue receiving the renewal fee if you are not getting boxes. One additional note that I want to make is that to my knowledge, Book of the Month does not ship internationally, not even to Canada. So unless you are in the United States, you are not going to be able to access the service. I tried to see if that was changed and as far as I could tell, it has not. But if you know differently, please be sure to let me know in the comments below because I would love for more of you who are not in the United States to have access to this service. So now that the details about the actual service are out of the way, I want to go ahead and talk about what the selections were for February. There were five this time and what I selected. So I'll go ahead and say the name and the author and then read the quick take that Book of the Month has on their website. So the first book we have here is Mame by Jessica George. It is a contemporary fiction and it says coming of age is hard work but this heartwarming story of self-discovery has plenty of laughs and wisdom to spare too. Next we have Georgie All the Way by Kate Claiborne. This is a romance and it says a love letter to anyone who struggled to find their way. This is a swoon worthy reminder to always bet on yourself. We have The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz which is a thriller and it says pro tip read the fine print before a writer's retreat lest you end up stuck with a kooky horror writer and your ex BFF. Next we have River See Me Home by Eleanor Shearer and this is a historical fiction. A mother's love knows no bounds in the scripting story of a formerly enslaved woman's search for her stolen children. And then finally we have Someone Else's Shoes by Jeja Moyes. This is a contemporary fiction. An accidental gym bag swap jolts two women whose lives are on the rocks into realizing it's time to seize their fates. All right so if you've been watching any of my past videos on 2023 releases you will know that The Writing Retreat and Someone Else's Shoes are actually two of the releases on my radar for this year. Now I actually already have Someone Else's Shoes pre-ordered for another bookish subscription service that I'm a part of. And so for this month the only book that I selected was The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. Like I said this is a thriller and it follows our main character who is an aspiring novelist but she's kind of given up hope on ever being published but then she's offered to join an exclusive writing retreat that is being hosted by this notorious feminist horror writer and she gets to the writing retreat and everybody there is kind of surprised to learn that they are going to be asked to start a novel from scratch meaning they can't work on anything that they've started before and the person who is deemed to have written the best novel at the end will receive a life-changing publishing deal and so naturally everybody is absolutely determined to win this competition but then of course things kind of go a little wonky determined to win the seemingly impossible contest Alex our main character buckles down and tries to ignore the strange happenings at the estate including erratic behavior cruel mind games and the alleged haunting of the mansion itself but when one of the writers vanishes during a snowstorm Alex realizes that something very sinister is afoot with the clock running out she must discover the truth or suffer the same fate so this sounds absolutely fantastic and I'm really digging the isolationist vibes that I'm getting from this as well so I was very excited to see this as one of the book of the month selections so aside from this none of the other curated selections for February interested me except for someone else's shoes but like I said I already had that on order and then as I have been a subscriber of book of the month for many many years I am already well acquainted with their back stocks so all of the past selections that they have available for you to put as an add-on I've already been there done that gone through them multiple times and I have purchased everything that I want to purchase so basically at this point if there's nothing that I want from the curated monthly selections and there's no new books that have been added to their website that aren't included this month or in past months then I'm just going to get the one book and that was the case here if I remember correctly there was only one additional add-on book placed on their website which is quite unusual they typically have like three or four to choose from but there was only one possibly two in February and I didn't want either one of them so at the end of the day with book of the month I only chose the writing retreat by Julia Bard so that was book of the month their services some of their policies the offerings for February and what I chose now let's get on to Aardvark book club so as I mentioned earlier Aardvark book club can basically now be considered a direct competitor to book of the month because their services are very very similar like book of the month on the first of the month Aardvark releases four to five in this instance curated selections you will of course choose your main pick and then you have the ability to choose to add on also like book of the month you cannot ship an Aardvark box unless there's one of those curated monthly selections in your box now of course since this is my first time ever getting Aardvark I am not nearly as intimately familiar with the back stock of items that they keep from past selections so I did go through prior to placing my February box and they actually had a lot of really interesting selections books that I had not seen in any other book boxes before books that I had never even heard of before that caught my attention so it definitely seems like Aardvark has kind of a wider array of choices to choose from where book of the month you kind of know that you're definitely going to get some of the more popular selections that are releasing in February I feel like Aardvark kind of goes a step further and dives more deeply to find titles that might not otherwise be well known and that are newer releases which I appreciate about that so currently Aardvark's monthly renewal fee is $17.99 for those within the US so that is slightly more expensive than book of the month but their monthly add-ons are $9.99 which is a dollar less than what I am paying now so it kind of all averages out and Aardvark actually does ship to Canada although their monthly fee and their add-on prices are definitely more expensive for Canada if you are in Canada you will pay $25.99 every single month for the renewal fee and then 
$4.99 for each additional add-on that you place in the box, but it is lovely that Aardvark offers this subscription to Canadian customers. So if you are in Canada and you've always been interested in Book of the Month, but you can't get your hands on it, Aardvark may be a viable option for you to consider. But the perhaps true negative to this box is that they currently do not offer a skip option. I do believe that they are working on that and that it will be available soon. But for now, go on there and you don't want any of their monthly selections. That's fine. You don't actually have to place that order, but every single month you are going to get a renewal fee. Another thing that I don't know and I will have to find out is whether like with Book of the Month, if you don't place an order that month, if you continue to accrue credits that you can use in future boxes. I personally don't know that either. I will have to kind of figure it out or it's something that I will learn as I skip boxes in the future. All right, so that is a little bit about Aardvark Book Box and their services and some of their policies and prices. Let me go ahead and go through the five selections that they had for February. So first they had The Sweet Spot by Amy Popel, which was a contemporary fiction. In the heart of Greenwich Village, three women form an accidental sorority when a baby belonging to exactly none of them lands on their collective doorstep. We have a cozy mystery called A Half-Baked Murder by Emily George, and it says, combining French luxury and THC baked by Chloe will take pot brownies to another level. That is, until a creepy past acquaintance rehashes old drama and shockingly turns up dead, landing Aunt Dawn as the number one murder suspect. We have a thriller called Liar Dreamer Thief by Maria Dong. A young woman's carefully constructed fantasy world implodes in this brilliantly conceived novel that blurs distinctions between right and wrong, comedy and tragedy, imagination and reality. We have an historical fiction called The House of Eve by Sadiqa Johnson, a daring and redemptive novel set in 1950s Philadelphia and Washington DC that explores what it means to be a woman and a mother and how much one is willing to sacrifice to achieve her greatest goal. And then finally, we have The Dream Builders, and I'm going to completely butcher this name, I apologize. It is Oindrila Mukherjee, and it says, written from the perspectives of 10 different characters, this incisive debut novel explores class divisions, gender roles, and stories of survival within a society that is constantly changing and becoming increasingly Americanized. Okay, so full transparency, when I initially saw the selections for February, I wasn't super impressed. I knew that the literary fiction was definitely not going to be for me. I'm not a very big literary fiction person and the overall synopsis was not very intriguing. I was initially kind of interested in the thriller and historical fiction because those are some of my go-to genres. But again, after reading the synopses of both of them, I realized that I wasn't really interested. So that left the cozy mystery and the contemporary fiction and cozy mysteries are 100% not something I read. I am a mystery thriller girly all the way, but I like them to be dark, gruesome, gritty, violent, all of the things. And you do not get those in cozy mysteries. The only one that sounded like it could even remotely be my thing was the sweet spot. So as you can see, this has the branding here for Aardvark, but not on the spine, which I actually really appreciate. I think I've heard rumors that they do plan to start branding on the spine like Book of the Month, which is fine. It's acceptable, obviously, because I do have Book of the Month, but I kind of like this better because I feel like now with my Book of the Month books, I have to keep them all on one shelf so that they are cohesive because they don't match any of my other editions. And they are actually quite tall. They're taller than my other editions. You can kind of see here that the sweet spot is a normal adult size hardcover and this is definitely taller. This actually doesn't even have the book of the month branding so I'm not sure what's going on with that. It says that it's book of the month on the back but it doesn't have it on the spine which I do know this with some of their books. So then I'm kind of in a conundrum. This is a book of the month book and it's definitely the size of a book of the month book but do I put it on my book of the month shelf? You see the quandaries that I get myself in here? So long story short I would prefer to have editions like this. I definitely prefer the normal size hardcover, the no branding on the spine. So so far I love the overall edition of this better than book of the month edition. And then kind of as the blurb suggests, this is definitely a comedy of errors. It follows three different women who are all connected by one additional woman. And what happens when that additional woman has a baby? And these three women kind of find themselves in charge of that baby unexpectedly. It was just so flippin' delightful. And I plan to do more of an in-depth review in that recent reads video that I have coming up. But I'm ultimately very, very glad that I selected this one. I also ended up choosing The Key to My Heart by Leah Louise as my add-on. This one was already on my TBR. And so I was excited to see this. This was January selection. So I just missed out on January box, but I was lucky enough that this was still in stock. So this says, Sparkling and charming Natalie Fincher has it all. A handsome new husband, a fixer-upper cottage of her dreams, and the opportunity to tour with the musical she spent years writing. But when her husband suddenly dies, all her hopes and dreams instantly disappear. Two and a half years later, Natalie is still lost. She works, sleeps, and sees friends just enough to allay their worries. But her life is empty. She's lost motivation and faith in love and happiness and everything. But when someone begins to leave mysterious messages for Natalie at the local train station's piano where she plays, she begins to feel a sense of hope and excitement for the first time since her husband's death. Before long, she finds herself on an unexpected journey toward newfound love for herself, for life, and maybe for a special someone. I just thought that this sounded absolutely beautiful. It sounds like it deals a lot with grief and kind of finding yourself and your purpose again and finding new love when you didn't think that was possible. So this sounds phenomenal. I've heard great things about it. I do have Eight Perfect Hours by Leah Lewis that I still haven't read yet, 
but this sounded right up my alley and I had to grab it. So what are my overall thoughts? I don't really necessarily feel that I can give a full yay or nay to Aardvark because this was my very first box. So I do want to at least get several more boxes before I make a definitive decision on them. But as of right this second, I would say that they are just as good as Book of the Month. Was I super impressed with their selections? No, but that is going to happen no matter what book box you select. I think the ultimate decider is going to be consistency. So if for the next several months I go on there and there's not very many books that I want to select, then that's going to be a sign that maybe Aardvark is not the book box for me. But like I said, I don't have a formal skip option, so I will still continue to be charged for the boxes that I've skipped. So there are definitely some cons in terms of Aardvark's policy, but as I mentioned, I believe that this is in the works and it will eventually be fixed. And I do like the fact that they ship internationally. I do like the fact that they give you a wider selection of books to choose from. They're not just going to be the most popular releases that are coming out at the time. So I feel like you get a lot more variety with Aardvark than you do with Book of the Month, although I have to say that Book of the Month continuously appeals to me and my sense abilities it is definitely a box for those who love mystery thrillers they almost constantly have at least one mystery thriller every single month that I want so there's definitely consistency with book of the month that I love but like I said I've been with them for almost five years and I don't know what the consistency is going to be like with aardvark so that is to be determined so as of right now do I think aardvark is worth it absolutely especially if you have not been impressed with book of the month if you have maybe been subscribed to them and stopped and you want something different but comparable aardvark is for you again if you are international and you wanted book of the month and you can't aardvark might be for you so I do think it is definitely worth the shot. There is nothing outwardly egregious with Aardvark book box that I can see that would prevent me from going forward with my subscription with them or preventing me from recommending them to other people. So, so far they are definitely two very, very comparable boxes, comparable services, comparable prices, comparable basically everything. I'm glad to see that book of the month is definitely getting some competition at this point and I would definitely recommend giving them a try if it intrigues you. All right, y'all, that is it. That is all that I have for this video for this comparison between book of the month and Aardvark book club please comment down below and let me know if you subscribe to one or both of these subscription services and what your thoughts are do you like aardvark do you like book of the month do you like neither of them and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already i post two videos a week sometimes three if i have my shit together and i have a third video to film and i would sure love to see you in one of those next videos